Next indirect area is a transposition of great arteries. Very easy to diagnose on a neonatal echo and adult echo, but difficult in, in, in the fetus. Again, the issue of a resolution. Now, once you see in a five, four chamber view, you may be lucky to see uh, the, the uh, artery which is coming from LV, which is smaller, and you see it is branching into two. Okay, and then you see these branching arteries. Okay, the artery coming from left ventricle is branching, that means this is pulmonary artery. But this clear cut view is not seen in most of the cases. So, let's say uh, this is what we I am trying to show you. This is the branching of the artery, which is smaller, and uh, the branching is pulmonary artery and aorta is not branching. And this is what same sign we use in adult or neonatal echo to diagnose. But what happens once you do not have this sign can be clearly visible. Then in, in fetal echo, we have indirect signs. One of the indirect signs is a vessels which are parallel to each other. They are not crossing. That crossover is not present. So crossover rules out TAPV, uh, the TGA, but if there is no crossover, the both vessels are parallel to each other. This is a sign, indirect sign of transposition of great arteries. So and like you see this, uh, there is a crossover. Uh, this is aorta which is going like this and this is the pulmonary artery and they are crossing at 90 degree and this is the patient with the DORV and the vessels are not crossing. They are going parallel. You see these two parallel vessels and these two parallel vessels actually indicate what indicates that there is a transposition or malposition of the great arteries. So this is an indirect sign to look for a transposition of great arteries. Another sign is what we call as an eye sign or in a three vessel view. I'm going to show you three vessel view in subsequent slides. And on a three vessel view, you see a single vessel. You should have seen pulmonary artery as well as aorta. You don't see it. Reason? Because once you're cutting at this, you're seeing aorta and then you are at a different plane when you see a pulmonary artery. I'll describe this three vessel view in a short while. Interestingly, there are no gradients or very small gradients, even if there is an obstruction or occlusion of one area. Why so? Now, let's give me give you an example of tetralogy of fallow. Now, this is a patient of tetralogy of fallow. And if you see, there is an aortic override and there is a large VSD. Okay. And then you see this pulmonary artery, which is small. Okay. Now, once we put a pulse Doppler on a pulmonary artery, we don't get very huge gradients there. Why? In, in the fetus, you have two shunts at the fossa valis level and then at the level of a ductus arteriosus. The blood preferentially goes to the other chamber. Once you have a pulmonary stenosis, blood would prefer going into the aorta and the pulmonary artery and pulmonary artery does not grow well. It remains small or small pulmonary artery is a sign of a pulmonary stenosis in tetralogy of fellow. And if we had been depending upon the Doppler signals and velocities, we would have missed it. Okay. So another example is a coarctation of aorta. In a coarctation aorta is the fifth common congenital heart problem while we examining a fetal echo. And isthmus anyway is the narrowest portion right in that uh, circulation of, of uh, arch of aorta and a descending aorta. And we know that there is a ductus and the pulmonary artery through ductus opens into descending aorta. The descending aorta is small, ascending aorta is okay and the this is a kind of a watershed area with the blood from the left ventricle goes into uh, the cerebral and arms and then the from the heart it goes from the pulmonary artery doesn't go to the lungs too much goes to the descending aorta okay and this is the flow pattern here and this is the flow pattern here and this becomes a watershed area where flow is less so this area grows less the isthmus is smaller when we are trying to diagnose a coarctation of aorta and you see the chambers right and uh, right-sided chambers are dilated, but for many a times we are able to see a very nice coax segment. Unfortunately, most of the times we don't get this sign, nice sign of a coarctation 
and when we miss to miss the coarctation because this sign is not present because of the issue of the resolution and there is no gradient if you put a pulse doppler there there won't be any gradient and then what do we do in in fetal echo we depend uh, on a uh, for a coarctation we depend upon a sign of ventricular disparity the ra and rv are larger than la and lv so is the pulmonary artery in aorta this ventricular disparity is a sign of coarctation so what i'm trying to tell you what i'm telling you yes i am telling you that ra and rv and pa are larger than the counterparts in coarctation of aorta la lv are not direct dilated in coarctation of aorta ra rv are dilated in coarctation sounds paradoxical why now if you have a coarctation of aorta okay so i go back again and show you this same thing again in the coarctation of aorta what you have is that you have the ductus which is becomes narrow and the blood from the foramen ovale it goes more on the right side so once it's finding obstruction on the left side blood preferentially goes to the right side from the fossa ovalis and that's why ra rv become dilated so we use this sign for ventricular disproportion and these are the signs which we use for assessing coarctation of aorta we use couple of special views in fetal echo and what are those one is a three vessel view a wonderful view uh, described by yo at all and this view is somewhere here where we cut the aorta and uh, you know we see the svc we see the aorta and then we see the pulmonary artery in the single plane and that's the plane pulmonary artery aorta and that's trachea and this is uh, superior vena cava now this is such a useful plane we see the sign of thymus thymus hypoplasia is present in certain congenital disorders very very important we see the size of pulmonary artery see the size of aorta size of svc their relation to trachea whether the aorta is right sided left sided or it's a um, uh, double arch aorta so many things can be picked up on this view we believe that if you do a four chamber view and a three vessel trachea view majority of the diagnosis can be made over 90% for example if we have an aorta which is smaller and there is an anti grade flow you know this is aortic stenosis but in case you have a pulmonary artery and then you have a reversal of the flow in the aorta you know there is an obstruction or pulmonary aortic atresia or aortic valve is atratic that is why the flow is coming in this direction so there are a lot of advantage on three vessel view which i will share with you in my subsequent uh, uh, videos i have i'll have about five or six videos on uh, echocardiography fetal echocardiography for adult cardiologists so same as i was telling you in a three vessel view you would have expected uh, uh, aorta and a pulmonary artery here but one pulmonary artery is missing and the reason is when you are cutting the section on three vessel view in in a tga both the vessels are not on the same plane aorta is in the lower plane as the vessels are parallel to each other we have couple of uh, structures which are not present in adult uh, heart and uh, the common ones are ductus venosus fossa ovalis so abnormalities of fossa ovalis like restriction or aneurysm can create problems ductus arteriosus these are three structures which are special in cardiovascular uh, uh, physiology in the in the fetal heart so ductus venosus is the ductus arteriosus is which shunts the blood from the pulmonary artery about 11% goes to the lungs rest of the blood from the rv goes to the descending aorta to the placenta and lower limbs for saturation and ductus venosus is when the umbilical vein flow comes part of the flow goes into the liver and the oxygenated blood through a small channel ductus venosus is selectively pumped into left atrium by the jet okay so that's very very important 
now about the ductal arteriosis ductal arteriosis uh, constriction can lead to lot of problems and even demise because that's the only outlet of the right ventricle so now causes of ductal restriction anti inflammatory drugs polyphenols steroids and idiopathic ones there's a separate video on that you can watch that on my youtube channel on a ductal restriction but ductal restriction can be a big problem and that we as an adult cardiologist we should know about it and ductal stenosis is another structure which what does um, large pressure from the umbilical vein is damped and given to the left atrium but in case that is absent or it joins directly into the into the right atrium and like this and it creates a problem because the pressures are not reduced and blood goes into the right atrium rather than the left atrium which should have gone by the jet and that's a patient with a umbilical vein and that's is a power doppler uh, then is a umbilical vein directly opening into the right atrium and not going through the liver in the last couple of slides i'm going to tell you that if you have a patient with a mild aortic stenosis over a period of time because fetus is just not becoming big no it is actually remodeling now what is happening if the if the, there is a mild aortic stenosis it can lead to hypoplastic left heart the lv would become small mitral valve would become atrectic over a period of time why because the blood flow in that area is reduced and more blood is going from the right side and there is a phenomena the blood flow and the pressure actually makes the ventricles grow or arteries grow if there is less blood the arteries tend to remodel and they become smaller correct so we even small aortic stenosis or a mild aortic stenosis is important to pick up in case of an early gestation fetal echo because it can and then we need to have a follow up it can lead to hypoplastic uh, left heart uh, syndrome so this is uh, my detailed uh, presentation on this now let us go to another area okay now arrhythmias now fetal arrhythmias is a problem because we don't have an ecg and you know secondly that we have to give medication to the mother and treat the fetus and the dosage given to the mother is going to be huge because there is a small amount is going to travel to the mother no ecg puts at a great disadvantage of managing a diagnosis of arrhythmia now what do we depend upon we depend upon the m mode or other doppler parameters to diagnose arrhythmia i'm just focusing here on an m mode on subsequent videos i'll share on other methods of detecting arrhythmia so this is an m mode and we use an atrial activity okay and a ventricular activity and that's a ventricular activity and this is atrial activity and ventricular activity is uh, considered as a qrs complex atrial activity is considered as a p wave and that's how we analyze the arrhythmia for example that's an atrial activity and that's a ventricular activity and if you have this ladder diagram atrial activity connected to the ventricle atrial activity connected to the ventricle atrial activity connected to the ventricle we presume this is p wave and this is qrs and then you have another p wave or atrial activity which is not conducted down so we know that this is a block so this is how this arrhythmia diagnosis is challenging in fetal echo and we use indirect signs if once we don't have an ecg uh, those of you who are interested to know how was my journey from adult echo to a fetal echo this would be another good article which i uh, published some time back and uh, maybe another idea is to subscribe the channel and uh, whatever uh, whenever i kind of uh, post new videos you would get notified so for now bye and uh, keep learning happy learning